Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones with me, Alpha Biomega, and King Rhaegar Targaryen of the Iron Throne. So I wanted to thank you again uh, for the comments that you guys posted. Uh, there has been some very interesting discussion about uh, the, well, incest debuff, <laughs> to, to be frank. Uh, among the Targaryens. Now, we do not have such a debuff for Rhaegar, nor for anyone around us, as far as I can see, nor for our father, as, our, as far as I can see. Uh, but according to what you guys told me, and especially Volfau, uh, there is a huge amount of debilitating um, traits between Targaryens that mostly um, manifest in, as we can see here, uh, among our siblings, early death or miscarriages. So uh, the fact that I want to continue in the tradition and intermarry our children uh, might bite us in the rear uh, sooner or later, but we shall see. I don't know how the game is handling this, if we have some, um, some hidden trait or something like that. Um, Unfortunately, uh, I cannot tell. I've never done this before, so we'll see. But I was under the impression that the Targaryens were sort of immune to this sort of inbreeding. But uh, you changed my mind. They aren't, and that's going to make this very, very interesting. Another point that I would like to mention before I'm uh, going to continue uh, playing is that you guys uh, made it quite... Um, quite known that you disagree with me naming Lord Horace as the Lord Commander and that uh, Arthur Dane should have been uh, the Lord Commander. The truth is that the reason why I named Horace is because he was um, presented as the first one as the, I think it said like the obvious choice is Sir Horace. So while in the books and in the canon uh, it would probably be someone else. I guess in this timeline, Sir Horace was the one that we should do. I don't know. Uh, I just went with it uh, because it was the first option. There was no uh, big strategy behind it, I understand. And uh, if he dies, then next in line is definitely Arthur Dane. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Unfortunately, I, unless I murder my Kingsguard uh, Lord Commander, uh, there's no way we can now make uh, Arthur Dane uh, the leader of the King's Guard. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe maybe something's gonna happen. Now we're gonna start this episode uh, by now holding a court uh, by King Rhaegar because uh, we can do that right now. So let's hear the petitioners and see what they're coming with. So the first one is dress me, dress me. Before the court is underway, my master of laws pulls me aside. To my surprise, he is brandishing a garish sock. My lord, there will be so many attending your court. I know you are somewhat challenged in remembering every face and from whence it hails. I propose a solution. We require all the courts to wear dress, which includes local style recognizable to all. He foists a conlet at me. For those without queer regional fashions, I've taken the liberty of hiring a tailor who can suggest some new traditional garb for them to wear. I never forget the face, I shall be fine. So we gain 6 court grandeur and 300 diplomas of lifestyle experience and there's a zero chance that we would confuse the guests upon arrival or I'm certain my guests will wear such raiment proudly. All vassals get striking traditional garb, which gives them extra diplomacy, or forget my guests, I have the tailor design me an exquisite outfit. So we gain 10 court grandeur. Uh, oh, and we gain honey covered corset artifact diamond studs. Huh. Fur blouse. No, I mean, let's go with the I never forget a face, I shall be fine. Uh, but uh, that's kind of interesting. We could have gotten an artifact out of that. 
The Republic of Dragonstone. Uh, Your Grace, my city of Black Glassport grows richer by our burghers dealing with the trading ships which ply the havens along the Iron Throne's coast. We made our town a new prosperous and deserve greater influence over Dragonstone. It is yours to rule. Such privileges must be justified. You ask too much. There must be some other way. They gain a mercantile charter. Be satisfied with your present liberties, master. Spurn burgers. Actually, no, let's give them the mercantile charter. We are happy that they can get something extra. Yep, okay, so they are happy. A traitor uncovered. One of my guards approached me with my courtier Koran in chains, trimming behind him. I caught Korain here in the process of sending sensitive information to foreign spies in the wall. What should we do with him? Koran, your courtier. Um, off with his head. I forgive once. Do not betray me again. I have different plans for you. We imprison him. As I have a fair reason, no one will think of me and tyrant. Let's imprison him and we can send him off to the wall. If he likes the wall so much, we are going to oblige him and send him there. So you are going to be banished to the wall. He takes... Yeah, he's going to be the black brother. So banish you. Off to the wall with you. Now we have eight options here. Uh, we can pardon criminals, imprison powerful vassals, and we are in debt. Okay, and what's the four other? Not sure what that is. To the foppish King Rhaegar, I have no choice but to accept the condition. The Black Brother, monthly piety and dynasty option. Ignore negative culture options. There are deserter characters. I wonder how many there are. If we ever find one, uh, it's off with their head, to be quite honest. Okay, small harbor and pastures are finished. Our consul Gaius died. Succumb to his inherent weakness. Inherent weakness. What does that mean? Oh, he was feeble. Okay, that makes sense. Greetings. Okay, what's sure Lord Monfort to me? At once, he gave me 15 gold, that is great. So constructions are continuing. But one thing that I actually would like to do uh, in this episode, or at least start with it, is that I believe we might want to either get our own regalia or create our own crown. Because uh, we're wearing the crown of Aegon the first, but I think we are proud enough to actually uh, deal with this on our own. The thing is... I still don't know where the brushes are. We gained two brushes as trinkets, I think, but we don't have them, so I'm not sure where they are. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Our heir is 11. He's a squire. Good for him. We need to get a bit more gold, and once we get that, actually, I can request uh, this. Can't I? Greetings. Okay, he's petitioning me. Thank you for seeing me, my wish. I come to you today with an urgent request. I have run into some financial difficulties. Very well, your coffers shall be filled. Okay, I guess he owes us money or something. And we have an empty council position of the Castellan. Uh, so there are some powerful vassals. What paramount mace of the reach. Mm, you need diplomacy or something? No, I think uh, nothing of such is necessary. But you want a position. So let's have you there. Oversee the realm. 
that is absolutely fine we are making money here i'd like to go on another hunt soon because we truly enjoy it and it goes well with our uh what was it? Uh, so solitary. Yeah, solitary trade because it reduces stress, so we enjoy it. But we're gonna always go with just a small. Fascination discovered. Your culture has discovered the fascination land grants. A new fascination can be selected. Lord Alan came to the royal court. And we can escape to Summer Hall now. Now. Um. Wait, no, that's lifestyle. Where are the fascinations? I think it's under the culture, right? No, that's innovations. Lifestyle. Time to allegiance. I saw the fascinations somewhere, but current situation can pardon, can imprison. You are in debt. Well, we know that. Realm will lose land if Master George the Strong of Bear Island inherits the wall. We've already talked about that. I don't think that can happen. Can pardon criminals, create an accolade. You can appoint a successor to the most skilled of the Iron Throne. Aha. So let's put Olivar there. And anything else? Lord Paramount Allen of Stormlands. This guy is pretty nice. He's chaste, arrogant, solitary, and patient. Thrifty quirk. Okay. Let's look at this event, then I'm gonna check the fascinations uh, later. Scrounger life. Daphne has become a permanent fixture of my court. And an expensive one. Actually, an expensive one, too. He is there for every banquet, wolfing down everything in sight while complaining about how empty his own pantry is. You serve the best drinks, my lord, he says, after downing another tankard of my finest refined hippocrats. You are the most industrious, the most thoughtful, the best looking lord. He declares, his hand extended for another loan he will never repay. He is an annoying waste of money, but his exaggerated antics are quite entertaining. He's craven and greedy. Holy warrior. Robust. Valued intrigue courtier. Since you're always here, you might as well make yourself useful. We appoint him as a fool. All things considered, I find him quite funny. Keep this leech out of my sight. Well, we lose stress and get him out of our sight, so that's, I mean, we could have appointed him as a fool, but uh, gay people are gaining intrigue courtier and valued intrigue courtiers. Night has arrived. Another one. Okay. Lord Monfort has become your master at arms. And, oh no, our father has died. Died from being ill. And we became the head of House Targaryen. Ah, fabled. Legacies. We have two. Desirable match and renowned name. Marriage acceptance... Earning respect. Oh, and we have also Vibrant Court. Uh, and we have eight living members. I think all of them are related to me directly, aren't they? My brother, these are my children. Oh, and my, my uh, mother. <coughs> Pardon me. So, only eight living members. Hmm. Hodoris and Blackfire. So we had two bastard branches. I didn't even know. If anyone knows what these are, Hodoris and Blackfire, let me know. I'll, I'll try to remember and Google it later. Because I don't recall these names. So. We gain one core. 
I wish I could uh, go with a burial or something like that. That would have been a really nice thing to do. Must stop the villain behind this. Uh, one more thing that I actually decided is that uh, as a uh, Rhaegar Targaryen, we are going to focus on uh, building the walls. I want to be known as uh, the wall builder and uh, the walls around the Red Keep and uh, the King's Landing should be known as Rhaegar's, Rhaegar's walls. So we're gonna try to do that. We already started with that and we're gonna try to build a uh, Rhaegar's port in Dragonstone. I think we've, yeah, we started with the small harbor. So we'll focus on harbor over there and on the walls in the Red Keep. Wandering Hedge Knight John, a hedge knight, has arrived at my court. He has requested permission to rest at my keep for a short while before he resumes his travel. In return, he has offered me his service for the duration of his stay. An extra pair of hands would sure would be useful. Turn to the hedges and rest at our fake run. Um, sure, okay. As I walk from my courtyard, I spot John resting beneath an awning, too busy sleeping to conduct the service he'd offered me during the stay. So this is the type of knight you are. He gains the trade lazy, and he becomes either cynical, arbitrary, content, or arrogant. Lazy. Well, that's great. John has spent the day's day training in the courtyard, sparring with a few of my household guards. It seems he knows how to build the blade. He's a skilled fighter. Oh! Lord Tewin has uh, invited us to hunt. And we're gonna go there because that is actually something that we want. The Grand Tour is expensive. We don't have money for that. He is quite a tactician. So he becomes either a military engineer, unyielding defender, aggressive attacker, flexible leader, cautious leader, organizer, reckless, rough terrain, or open terrain expert, and he became unyielding defender. Friend of fatal casualties minus 25%. The time has come at last for John to return to the hedges from whence he came. For weaving, he comes before you and offers his sincere thanks for your hospitality, asking if he can be of any further service prior to his departure. Uh, he joins our court. Now you can have safe travels. Schemer discovered. My master of whispers has come to me with great news. It is Lady, Lady Ravenna of the Bramble that is plotting against my Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Horus. What? Miserable fiend. This is an act of tyranny. Secrets known to me, hooks on you. This is kind of weird because we don't see these ones as official secrets. I'm kind of confused. Okay, let's give it a couple more days and then we are gonna travel to toward Paramount's Twins Hunt. Okay, about a week before we go. Inspired person can be sponsored. We don't want to escape to Summer Hall. So let's join his. Jesus Christ, this is always such a long travel. But we don't really need anyone on this, do we? Yeah, at least it's safe. So, uh, let's go. And while we're gone, we are going to issue orders that once we have the money, the walls in, um, in the King's Landing will be upgraded. A hunt, a fresh start. I can't wait. Well, I bet you can't. Neighbor ruler won war. Lord Commander Jor has won against High Chiefess Morna of Haunted Forest. Okay, they're fighting over there. Chivalry is alive. While traveling through Sladmir, we run into some Reachman knights. They are deeply respectful and apparently huge lovers of poetry. They insist on reciting it at every chance they get. The code of conduct they follow has several merits and I can't help but admire it. 
One of the knights, Edgar, is particularly impressive. And do I have to take this tradition home? You gain personal chivalrous. Let's take this tradition home. I mean, we're already a poet, so this is a fairly easy choice for us. So let's see how well we're going to perform on this hunt. The Metal Man. Truly a stroll through vantage is a gift from the seven who are one. The tranquility of this place is suddenly and abruptly broken by the furious grunts and clattering of armor. Hark! Get me out of this metal prison! My squire took offense and my manner, even going so far as to call me heartless and has abandoned me. Whatever this strange man did could not have been enough to justify being stuck forever in his armor. I could of course have someone help him, but is it truly worth it? Consider the armor gone for a price. <laughs> Offer him loyal squares for his fealty. Aggressive with skill tactician, patient, honest, and stubborn. Uh, let's uh, let's recruit him. Too late. My caravan leader Elwo approached me with a grim look on his face. I'm sad to report that we didn't make it in time, my king. The activity started today and we are not for... What has happened? How did we miss it? We had a week. Uh, I didn't double check the time, to be quite honest. That's... Kinda... Sad. I travel a night errand. It is known that the people of Randerick seems to profess a special devotion towards the knight and their legends. My word, the knight says, bowing his head. It is most fortunate that you and I came to meet at this crossroad, for I am in search of a marvelous fountain, which water is said to cure all illnesses. If you were to help me in my quest, I shall pay homage to you. Horace is quick to interrupt. Wait, my word, I know this knight. It's Lester. Lustful, brilliant, gallant, and ornate. Oh, this guy is actually pretty cool. Oh my god, he's 27 Marshall. I should never leave a knight unintended. Horace, make him see reason and join our court. Okay, let's join him. There's the wolf, right? We've already had this. There's a stag defending the fountain. Don't fear, I shall fight it. I'm distracted and you get the water. Can you healing water legend for 15 years? Now you shall make a fine distraction. What an adventure. So inspiring. Well I don't feel we're gonna fight the stag. And we got Knight Errant training. And he got the holy water. And we're back. I have to check this. That was kind of weird that the calculation did not work as it should. We have an empty council position. Our Castellan. Oh, Councilor Paramount Mesa of the Reach has died. 38 from his wound. Oh, he was wounded and then became ill. Yeah, probably got infected. So powerful vassals want councillor positions. So Paramount Edimir of the Riverlands or Villas of the Reach or Tewin the Bully. His lady Joanna of Westerlands has died. Oh they already have Tyrion the Imp. Cynical, diligent, ambitious, and vengeful. My dispatched a good dwarf, genius, and administrative courtier. He's amazing. Stewardship 26. Yeah, in the books he was one hell of an administrator. So let's name Lord Paramount Edimur of Riverlands as our cast one. Because I still do not trust to win, and I have a, I have a. Could it be the events that actually distracted us? I don't know. It's kind of weird. 
Well, whatever happened, uh, it's done now, so we can't really do much. Okay. Well, it's kind of interesting because the walls... I guess the walls are only as part of the Red Keep. And we can't really build walls around the city, but... Uh, it's fine. It's gonna be the Red Keep's walls. 142. It's gonna take three years to build those. So we built the Bastion and Curtain walls before. The first step in any respectable fortification is the erection of Bastion and curtain walls. They do a decent job of keeping enemies and rioting peasantry at bay. We get extra attacks, fort level danger, and extra heavy cavalry, damage and toughness, and a bit of garrison. And the next step is a bailey, which is a perfect and most defensible place to store critical supplies that will see us through a siege. Such a weapon arm such as weapons, armor and pickled boar's heads. I don't know, I, this pickled boar's head is, that was in Crusader Kings 2 as well, is that a joke or is that a real food? I've never heard it anywhere outside of Crusader Kings. So this will increase the tax, fort level, danger, yeah, heavy cavalry damage and garrison and supply limit increases quite nicely. So he came to pay us homage. We should be able to build the bay away next. He comes highly recommended. Prince Doran enters the throne room accompanied by a man of foreign to you. My lord, Doran rasps, a proud look on his face. It is my honor to introduce you to Balon Swan. He is the most puissant man of considerable martial talent and has forsaken marriage and titles in the hope of one day joining your king's guard. Balon Swan. Brave, humble, stubborn, and vengeful. Aspiring Blade Master. Aggressive attacker. Strong. Formidable fighter. Well, our relation with the Prince Doran of Dorne is extremely good. And we have a vacation. So let's make him our king's guard. My king's guard Balon kneels before me, swearing to exchange his life for mine, to obey our words and keep our confidence, to speak his mind or hold his tongue at our back. Rise, said Balon. Father's reaction. I must thank you, my thoughtful wish, for bestowing the honor of serving within your royal guard unto my son. Oh, that's his son! Okay. My composed vassal, Lord Gwilan of Redwatch, approaches me after the investiture of the newest member of the King's Guard. Wait. Oh, no, 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 that's someone else. Okay, so not Lord Balon. Uh, this is Lord Gwilan of Redwatch. Indeed. You are welcome. And now let's give the order to upgrade the walls to a bailey. Next step is wall towers. Wall towers act as excellent vantage points, allowing our soldiers to snipe away and approaching armies safely. When not at war, they're excellent to gloat at peasants from. Uh, then second curtain wall, swinger, outer baileys, trace italienne, and the Ravelins and Cavaliers. Nice, we're upgrading the Red Keep pretty nicely. Spending our money wherever we can. Can I... Recruit a spy. Sway. I mean, we really like her, so there's nothing we can do, unfortunately. Lines about legacy. The latest work of my master of laws, Lord Adrian, has become all the rage at court of late. The peace deals with memory and what we leave behind, and Adrian has publicly dedicated it to me. The heritage of a king. But man does not hope to rest when tired, in glorious memory with hearts desired. Tis rare enough for men to admit that all they leave behind is shit. <laughs> uh... 
Adrian, I can see this is true and heartfelt. Yeah, well, we are leaving behind a port and walls, my friend. We are leaving behind port and our walls. Okay, and we need to start um, the armored footman. Is that heavy? Yeah, that's a heavy infantry. Uh, which we could start extending. Because I think they are stationed... Aren't they? Yeah, they're stationed in the Red Keep. At least they are now. So uh, we could extend them. And especially the walls are good for... No, that's a heavy cavalry. Okay. So we need to create a heavy cavalry regiment to put them there. As we're building the walls. Armored horsemen. 180. Of course they do. Uh, and where could we get... What is good for heavy infantry? Barracks, right? Yeah. Okay, so do we have barracks anywhere? Nope, we did shooting, ra shooting ranges. Okay, so... Mended arms would be good here. Siege weapons. Aren't you good for archers? Yeah, you are as well. Okay. Huh? Cool, so I'm gonna end the episode here. Uh, we've actually not done too much in this one, but I'm pretty happy we're gaining uh, martial experience. I don't know if we can actually get the Peacemaker and then go with the Gallant, or we'll have to finish it all. But uh, we're looking pretty good, I'm doing pretty fine. And I think uh, once we invest into the port, we could go for another hunt. So, thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next episode.